So in the last video, we built our wheel and tire. For this video, we're gonna just go ahead and add some more details to it. So let's look at what we need to do based on our sketch. Now, this looks like it's kind of a, an older 60s style mag wheel with some kind of soft spokes in here. And then there's a hub and a little center cap and five lug nuts or something like that. So let's go ahead and start with the hub. And I'm gonna just build this out of primitive objects. I'm gonna start with a cylinder. And I want to make sure that my center snap is turned on. So I'm going to just snap to the center and I'm going to pull this a little bit big and I'm just going to enter 0.25 so that it's a quarter inch thick. And all this is going to be subject to adjustment. So I'm just kind of working with rough numbers here. So this would be the back of the hub and then there would be a little step in here and this is where the lug nuts would land. So we need a second cylinder in here. So I'm going to just copy paste doing control C, control V, and then I'm going to shift drag on one of these handles and scale this so that it fits to about where the center cap would be. I'm going to go to perspective, go to shade, and I'm going to just drag this out until it feels right. Again, I keep saying that until it feels right. And the, the reason I keep saying that is because I'm doing my design in 3D. I'm not just copying a drawing. The drawing is just a guide. The drawing is just to get me so that my model feels like the sketch. It's not intended to be an exact copy. So we have some lug nuts in here and in this toy, it's kind of simplified. So instead of using a hexagon, I'm just gonna go ahead and use another cylinder. I'm gonna copy paste, I'm gonna shift scale, and then I'm gonna use this two dimensional manipulator to move it. Scaled it a little too small, so I'm going to shift drag a little bigger, put it somewhere in there. I'm going to just kind of place it to where it feels right. Now I need five of those, so I'm going to transform array polar. And I'm going to pick the center. Number of items is going to be five. And I'm just going to drop it in there. Now, here's a cool thing about transform, and we're going to talk a lot about history as we go forward, but here's one cool use for history. And you'll notice that down in the corner here, you'll see a button that says record history. If you right click on this, you'll notice I have always record history and update children checked. Cool thing about that is I've done my array and I look at it and I decide, eh, that really was too big. So I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller. Since these are historically linked, all the other ones adjust. And that was a little subtle. Let me make it big so you can see. So if I adjust this object, which is considered the parent object, all the others will follow. I can also change its orientation. So if I were to rotate this, I can move it, they'll all update. But I'm gonna leave it here for now and we'll work with it as it sits. So let's go to the perspective view and take a look and see how we're doing. So that's starting to feel kind of hub-like. And I'm pretty happy with the relationship between the two of those, but I'm gonna leave everything unjoined for now until I get the spokes put in because the spokes are gonna really determine how this thing looks. And the spokes I'm gonna do with an ellipse and I'm just gonna do a little bit of sculpting on that. And I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna just drag straight up and I'm gonna place this kind of something like that. And then I'm gonna to go to my perspective view. And I'm going to pull the spoke, something like that. It's not right, but it's close. Now, primitive objects are degree two objects in this case, and they don't sculpt well. If I were to turn the points on, you'll notice that if I drag this thing around, it's very kinky and not smooth. So I need to actually rebuild this object before I do any sculpting on it to a degree three. I'm just going to type rebuild. I'm going to look at the object here and I'm just going to leave the point count the same but I'm going to just make sure that my degree is bumping up to three. I'm going to say okay. Now when I turn my points on and sculpt this you'll notice that I get much nicer transformations and that is really what I'm looking for. So I'm going to just use gumball. Gumball is great for this kind of stuff because you can sculpt in 3D. And I'm going to just start pulling points on this thing until it starts to fit my design. Pull this around like that. My spokes are off because I had them kind of off kilter, so I'll adjust that in a little bit. But for now, I just want to worry about this 
And maybe I scale these in a little bit. Maybe I pull this up a little bit. And intersecting is okay because we're going to just Boolean that stuff later. And maybe we even want to make this just a tad fatter right in the center. So I'm just going to pick those and scale them in 1D. So let's look at the front view and see kind of how it feels with our sketch. So our sketch are kind of nice and puffy. This is kind of nice and puffy. Maybe I'll even make it a little puffier. That feels pretty good. Now, I don't know how I feel about this relationship. It looks like it's a little deep. I'm going to hit the escape key and shut my points off. Maybe I'm going to drag this in a little bit. And maybe I'm going to pull my hub out a little bit. So that it's not quite so deep. So that looks good. Let's go back and adjust our original placement of these guys. And you'll notice that it didn't update. The reason it didn't update is when I moved the hub, I picked all of these things. And when I pick a child of the parent object and move it, it automatically breaks history. That's fine. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to just redo the array. Start from the center, five. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just array this from the center. And I get my wheel. So this is starting to look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. And it's starting to look kind of old school mag-like. And everything is still individual pieces. So now that we've got our basic layout, this is a good place to stop. We'll continue in the next lesson.